Hi, I'm Roger Dooley. I've got a cruise story for you that you are not going to believe. I wrote about this yesterday at Forbes CMO, and this is a truly wild story. A couple of days ago, passengers aboard the Silver Sea Silver Nova cruise ship were informed that there was going to be a delay in their arrival and debarkation at Fort Lauderdale following their cruise. Now, changes to itineraries and times are pretty common on cruises. Weather intervenes, there's a medical emergency, other things come up. It's pretty normal. Sometimes a port is delayed. But the one thing that is usually sacrosanct is the arrival time at the final port so passengers can be gotten off the ship, the ship can be prepared for the next batch of customers, and those customers boarded. So a four-hour delay is not insignificant. So what caused this delay? It wasn't any of the things I mentioned. It was a group photo op. Seriously. The Nova was to deviate from its course, meet up with two other cruise ships, and launch a drone or two, and pose for a three-ship photo opportunity in the middle of the ocean. That's it. Now, while this delay didn't seem like a big deal to the cruise line, they termed it slightly delayed in the letter, and they urged people who had made their own travel arrangements to adjust those travel arrangements as necessary. This is not a small deal. Normally, it's pretty safe to book a flight for a morning arrival at the port at 11 a.m. or certainly after 12 noon. Now, the new suggested earliest time was 5 p.m. What this means is that just about everybody who had booked air flights out after the cruise from Fort Lauderdale or Miami would have to now reschedule those flights. They would have to contact customer service or their travel agent and see what was available. They may have booked a nonstop flight with a great aisle seat months in advance or maybe in the front cabin. Now, they would be pretty much at the mercy of whatever was left on the plane at the last minute. This is not great. Now, some customers may have arranged for ground transportation away from the cruise port. They would have to reschedule that as well. Some customers might be forced now, if they miss their one flight out that day, to stay overnight in a hotel, unplanned. Even customers meeting people locally might have had to delay those plans. And we know for those customers who are pet people, pet owners, they too have arrangements to change. They must now tell whoever's watching the pet that they're going to have to watch them a little bit longer. And of course, they'll be separated from their fur baby for that much longer of time. Now, to me, this is a branding disaster for Silver Sea. They are a luxury cruise line a five-star cruise line. Their customers expect to be treated very well, and they usually are. And Silver Sea's credo says, we make the satisfaction of our guests our first priority. You know, this case does not seem to match up with that credo. Did they really think that a corporate photo shoot was what their customers wanted more than simply getting to their port on time and getting on with the rest of their trip on time? Probably not. My friend Denise Leone points out that brand power is built through keeping the promises that you make, not through making them. Now, to me, the biggest failure in this whole thing is a lack of empathy shown for the affected customers. The letter that people got said, okay, it's a slight delay, and please adjust your arrangements if you made them. We'll adjust yours if we made them. And if you happen to incur some extra cost as a result of this, we will reimburse that if it is reasonable, if you email them to us within 30 days. Now, this does not show a lot of empathy. It doesn't leave people with a comfortable feeling that if suddenly uh, they're booking a business class ticket that's $3,000 more, that the cruise line is going to say, okay, that's fine. This created a real sense of unease among their customers. Now, to be fair, I doubt if Silver Seas originated this plan. Almost certainly, this came down as a directive from the parent of Silver Sea, the Royal Caribbean Group. The other two ships were from Royal Caribbean and Celebrity, two other sister brands. And I think that there was probably a decision made somewhere that the 700-odd passengers on the Silver Sea were the ones that could most easily be inconvenienced compared to the 
10,000 plus passengers on the combined other two ships. There's a problem with this though. Silver Sea customers are some of the brand's best customers. They are more affluent. They cruise more often. They take longer cruises. And the revenue per day from these cruises is much higher than on some of the other brands. What they are doing here is not just alienating a mere 700 customers, they are alienating 700 of their best customers, their most profitable customers, and probably among the most loyal customers. Now, what can Silver Sea do from here on out? Well, I don't know that they could completely repair the damage that's already been done, but what I would suggest is, first of all, own the mistake. Tell people that, yes, we screwed up, we understand this is a big deal, sorry, we didn't mean to minimize it, and we're going to help you. Next, I would reach out to every cabin on that ship individually, even the ones that are making their own travel arrangements, just to be sure that first of all, they heard the apology, and second of all, that all their issues are being resolved, and reassure them that the expenses that they incurred will indeed be reimbursed. Third, I would recommend that the line exceed expectations. If a customer has to be put up in a hotel overnight unexpectedly, put them in a better hotel than they expected. If a customer's refunded some money for an expense they incurred, refund them that money, but then maybe give them a little bit of additional credit toward another cruise or a gift card or something. Exceed what they're expecting. And then finally, after all the dust from this settles, personally follow up with each affected cruiser. Contact them, make sure, again, they hear the apology, and be sure that there is nothing left unresolved and that the line has done everything it could possibly do to resolve it. This won't fix it completely, but it will make it more likely that many of those 700 passengers will stay loyal, profitable customers. Thank you.